What was the worst decision you saw someone else make? When I was about 7 years old I was in the car with my parents, going across the bridge from Niagara Falls, Ontario to Niagara Falls, New York. The deadly Niagara River is right below. There was quite a wait due to traffic, so we were pretty much stopped. A bunch of teenagers were goofing around, hopping out of their car and play fighting, etc. One guy hopped up on the railing of the bridge and did a handstand. It was terrifying. His friends yelled at him, and he hopped down. Then he did it again, and fell over the railing to his death. A girl I know, spent $50,000 on a wedding for a marriage, that lasted 6 months. I had a friend ask another friend, to shoot him with a blow dart. First the guy shot him in the leg, but my friend thought that was too easy, he was an overly confident marine reserve, so he asked him to shoot him in the side. The guy did, and it punctured his lung, though he wouldn't admit it. Then, trying to play it cool, he decided to go home, when really he was going to the hospital. We all followed him to his car trying to convince him to let one of us drive, or call an ambulance, but he just kept saying nothing was wrong. He collapsed right as he unlocked his car, and we had to call 911. He's fine, aside from his injured ego and dumb wits. Friends sold their beautiful home for a huge loss because they were concerned about the way things were going with the local real estate market. Later that year, gentrification took root and their house was worth almost three times what they sold it for. There was one incident in my hometown that made me want to tear my hair out. A family moved in a few years ago, they had two children, a boy and a girl. The mother was looking for work as a teacher, but there was no openings, so she worked as an aide. My mother was on the school board at the time, and she noticed that parents were complaining about the lady as she was apparently ignoring students and favoring others, getting angry when her children got bad grades from the other teachers, etc. Mom invited her to the next school board meeting to discuss the situation, and the lady went nuts. The conversation broke down into screaming, and the lady swore she would take mom's spot on the board. Sure enough, when election sign-ups went up online she was the only person who ran against mom. After months of an attempted smear campaign, mom won the election with more than 200 votes. The lady only got 5, all from her extended family. So what does the lady do? She decides to pull both of her children out of public school as she doesn't want them corrupted by the teachers and the board. The son was a senior in high school, months away from graduation, and the daughter was in middle school. My sister was in her class, and she said the daughter screamed and kicked her mom as she dragged her out of the classroom to check her out, begging her not to do it. She left all of her stuff in her locker, and the school had to send it to them. When mom heard the news she was horrified and tried to talk to the family, but the father had been browbeaten by his wife, and refused to put the kids back in public. It's been a couple of years since then. The mom homeschooled the kids, but the son works in the oil field and is trying to get his GED. The daughter is a complete rebel and has been arrested numerous times for drunk driving and vandalism. But the mom still has the audacity to act smug whenever someone runs into her at the grocery store. At least my children know how to live in the real world. Sure Kathy, keep telling yourself that when you have to bail your kid out from jail, Outside a bar, the bouncers offer to pay for a cab. Guy says no, calls his girlfriend she won't pick him up because of the baby. He says he won't drive, walks off, gets in his car, does 80 miles per hour down a side road, and gets busted for DUI. Offered a free cab ride home fed up his life, could have killed someone. I went to a party with a friend and she smoked meth. I worked in retail in college and met her there, she was really nice and we had the same sense of humor. After a few weeks she invited me to a house party in the middle of nowhere and it was all like all dudes in their 30s, she was dating one of them and we were like the only girls. I wanted to leave right away because not only were the people weird but the house was weird too, like there were no outlet covers on the outlets and barely any furniture but there was a stripper pole in the living room. She drove and convinced me to stay for one drink. When I got back from the kitchen with a beer she asked me if I wanted to smoke meth. She actually called it something else, but I didn't understand and only figured it out after she started explaining it to me. I declined and then watched kind of in shock as she started to smoke it while her boyfriend started telling me that it wasn't as bad as people think. 
I ended up calling my boyfriend to come get me and walking to the main road to wait for him because I really didn't want to be near that house. The next time I saw her at work, she told me that a few hours after I had left a guy who had been punched at the party had called the cops and she had been too afraid to go back to her car after running from the house, so she had spent the whole night just walking around in the nearby woods. I quit like 2 months later and never saw her again, but my friend who continued to work there told me a few months after the girl was fired for smoking meth in the bathroom at work. My cousin dropped a full ride baseball scholarship at a college in a town he grew up wanting to move to for a girl he started dating his senior year of high school. She was 2 years younger than him. He went to a state school instead that's 40 minutes from his hometown. She cheated on him and they broke up not long after school started. Ouch. My dad watched his best friend for 35 years drink himself into an alcoholic, essentially ruining his own life. They were drinking buddies for a long time, but my dad began to suspect he had a problem and tried to shake him out of it and quit drinking himself to avoid encouraging him to drink. His best friend's eventual DUIs and increasingly protective wife led to a strain on his relationship with my dad and anyone else he knew from high school and college. Now his wife won't let anybody talk to him ever again. My dad misses him greatly and won't stop telling stories about the antics they used to get up to when they were kids, always addressing him as uncle in the last few years we used to see each other. They started out in the sandbox at age 2 and eventually broke loose in their 30s. My best friend was marrying a girl just because they had a kid together. Everything was working out fine between them as friends and their daughter, though only three, seemed happy as well. Then they started to be friends with benefits and began dating again. Out of nowhere they announced that they were getting married. Everyone knew this was a bad idea considering their history and that marriage shouldn't be a thing you just try one day. Anyway, the wedding day comes and it's your typical affair. Church, priest, gown, flower girl, cake, etc. It was an uncomfortable experience for us as his friends, since we felt it wasn't set to last between the two of them. We didn't know how right we were. Two months in, and they're fighting almost every night. He tells me that anything will trigger a fight between them. One night it comes to a head when their fighting becomes physical. She shoves him, he shoves back, she punches him in the chin, he hits her in the left eye hard. Problem is she's petite and only 5 feet tall meanwhile he's a 6 feet 3 inch former bodybuilder. She ended up calling the cops and having him arrested. She now has full custody of their daughter and he spent 3 weeks in jail over the whole thing. So much for giving marriage a try. This goddamn loser friend of mine was so desperate for retention when we were drinking, coupled with his douchebag competitive attitude that's always on. He told this cute girl slash mutual friend of ours to dare him to drink as much of the bottle of vodka as possible in one go. She was confused because those are some stupid words that came out of his mouth. She said oh, okay, what am I agreeing to? He drank like 80% of a huge bottle of vodka straight in like 10 seconds in a desperate attempt to impress this girl so maybe she'd be so turned on by his willingness to do everything she says that maybe she'd freak him. Instead, he got yelled at for being freaking stupid, threw up for like 6 hours, and cried for the rest of the night. I felt bad, but he's a god awful friend who lost my friendship, so I laugh about it now. I'm 100% certain that he's going to die either drunk, in his car going 120 on some road somewhere, or both. Turning to alcohol to feel good. My friend really likes to get drunk, because he says it feels good, and he enjoys it. Long story short, since he has become a university student he has started excessive drinking every day when he knows that he can have a hangover the next day. That's up to 4 days a week. On a regular basis. Don't get me wrong it's not just a couple of beers. A full bottle of hard liquor every single one of those days. He drinks alone and most of the time until he just blacks out. He hides his behavior when he is at home visiting his family. And he has ignored every warning because he knows the danger of becoming an alcoholic from a case in his family. So, my fiance's cousin was donating $50 to Thon. Thon is a fundraiser held by Penn State where they dance for hours and hours to raise money for causes like a running marathon but dancing. 
he was donating to a friend and did it coins, hot glued to a cardboard backing, making a big Penn State logo. Cool looking. Well, his girlfriend decided it was so cool looking it should be framed. She went to a frame shop and got a custom frame that ended costing over $600. For something that was to be taken apart, the dabs were small, and he engineered it to come back apart easily, shortly after it was given. He was pissed. And they couldn't even return it, because it was a custom frame. So, they ended up keeping it, as to not totally waste $600, and he wrote a check for $50 for the donation. Now they have a silly, framed, $650 Penn State logo on their wall. And neither of them even went to Penn State. I slowed down from 100 km per hour to about 80 km per hour on a highway, because I saw a large kangaroo at the side of the road up ahead. Young guy behind revved his car at me it drove really close, and held his horn down, obviously annoyed. I had gently put the brakes on, so couldn't understand what his problem was. He just kept revving too. I put the brakes on again, when I saw the roost start taking off in front of me. It would have safely passed in front of me, until the idiot behind floored it around my car and absolutely decapitated the poor animal right in front of me. It went up, and over his bonnet, rolled down the side of the car finishing under the back wheel. I swear I saw it bend in half the wrong way. He pulled over further ahead, and I drove past him with tears in my eyes. I'm shock. He had a really nice, expensive looking car and the roo was large. So I really hope it did some exceptional damage to that loser's car, lest its death be a total waste. I was on tour when we played Newcastle in England. Decently big gig for some small timers like us. When discussing with the hosts, they mentioned that we should go and give the opening act a confidence boost as it was their first ever gig. Went down and met them. Talked to them, and they seemed absolutely confident as hell. Soon discovered they were an experimental band and that none of the guys actually played the instruments. That's right. They had decided to put a band together of non-musicians, not rehearse and play on the night thinking it would make them seem creative and ambitious. It was atrocious and cringy, that's what it was. A friend of my dad sold up his house in central London and bought a place in France, 15 acres, swimming pool, 8 bed house and a smaller house. Problem is it needs tons of maintenance, lots of repair work and a small supply of staff to keep it running. Now this wouldn't be a problem for a multi-millionaire, like the previous owner, but this guy isn't. He only has the money from the sale of his house which is dwindling fast. It's also a 50 mile round trip to the local shop slash pub. There's no internet and no TV. He's bored out of his mind and has no company except his missus and I think the realization of his situation is beginning to set in. People tried to talk him out of it, but sometimes when people get an idea in their head there is nothing you can say that will change their minds. I can see them trying to sell next year, but I don't think it will go very well. I think the previous owner was glad to be rid of it to be honest, and I don't know how long he had it up for sale. Very charming sweet young woman who has had problems with alcohol and drugs before gets involved in too many prescriptions. Adderall. Flexerol. Tramadol, Zoloft, Clonazabam, starts missing time at work. I wanted to sit her down and tell her to get her shit together, but she brought a friend along when I was going to meet her, so I held off at that time. Three days later she gets into an accident with all the pill bottles in the car. Another driver badly hurt, she now has possible time coming, lost her job, and has retreated into a shell, and won't deal with a lot of her old friends. Sad to watch. I wish I had spoken up earlier, I still worry about her, but there's not much I can do at this point. I once, when I was in the Boy Scouts, walked into an aquatic center for our PAX recreational day, and saw this huge diving board set they had. They had 12, 20, 30, and 40 foot diving boards and the moment I walked in, our diving instructor immediately told us that there was no need to worry about the 40 foot jump because everyone has done it safely and there has never been an injury or fatality from the jump. Seconds after he said that, at the same diving board, a young teenager ran to the end, if the platform and visibly changed his mind at the last second, just to then slip at the edge and hit his head, spilling blood immediately, and then falling 40 feet to the biggest belly, flop I had ever seen. My good friend at college, decides to take shots of vodka out of fresh habanero peppers. 
pretty freaking good, with a bunch of our friends. He was pretty bombed, and he was the one slicing then open, and pulling out the seeds. He decided to go to the bathroom, but didn't wash his hands beforehand, so the pepper inevitably got all over his junk, and he ran out screaming. Now this is where it got really dumb. He started screaming for a glass of milk to which someone got one for him, and then he proceeded to jam his dick into it, because milk makes spicy things go away. Like and subscribe for more edit videos.